And now, ladies and gentlemen from Malta, in the world of snooker, he is already the fastest man ever. Now, in the world of Paul, he will soon capture that title. Please welcome the Tornado, Tony Drago! As the players come in for the first semi-final, time to join your commentators, Sid Waddell and Jonathan Gale. Should be a cracker there, Noel Strickland. Already has hoisted this World Pool Masters trophy back in 97 in Essex, England. Up against the talk of World Pool, Tony Drago. In the semi-final, there's the lag. I think Drago wins Tony it. Tony Drago wins the lag. Race to eight, winner breaks. First rack, race to eight, winner breaks. Tony Drago to break. Tony Drago on the back of two fantastic wins already in this tournament. In the first round overcoming Alex Pagalion, gaining revenge for his defeat. In the semi-final stage of the World Pool Championships earlier on in Cardiff this year. And then in the quarter-final over local favourite Nick Vandenberg. Both times in both of those matches, Tony Drago, in the latter part of the match, really got his break going and ran rack after rack to close out each of those games. He knows he's going to have to be at his best for the whole of this match against Earl Strickland. And I think Earl will give due respect to the potting ability of Drago. For once he hesitates. Options here. Well, he was hesitating because of the positional side, but he just if he would if he had managed to get in behind that red, that would have been absolutely a fantastic shot. As it is, the red passes it through to the top pocket. Oh yes, and that's a great feet. Great result. Earl looking a little dumbfounded at the style of Tony Drago's play. He will have seen some evidence of it. At this year's World Championships. Take it from me, Earl misses very little. Knows this man is a wizard putter. Might lack some of the finesse, some of the nuances of this game. But he's learning every visit. Nine in the middle to open his account. No time wasted from Tony Drago. He races into a 1 0 lead over Earl Strickland. If he can get his break going, he may well run a few racks. Start of this match. Yep, yeah, ideal start against the legend. Three times world champion Strickland. And of course, Journey the Man. Got the last four of the world championships in Cardiff in the middle of 2003. Beaten by Pagalayan. And sending uh, the tectonic waves around the world of pull is Drigo. Absolutely, it's all about whether he can get, keep his break going. Once he's in, in, an, in and amongst the balls in Iraq, Tony Drago looks as good as anyone. But it's just whether he can keep the consistency of his break. And the consistency, I think Earl Strickland so far in this tournament has been the most consistent player. He's played excellently in both of his first, ga first games. And that last little bubble of the balls. And here we go. It's all about can see the break nicely on the one. Nothing down for Tony Drago, so it is <laughs> Earl to the table. No when easy. Break. No easy out as the the two is in an awkward position. He may elect to just leave the cue ball in a similar position to where the one currently is. Leave either a safety or a bank on the blue two. There's the fan club, Earl. Choice now of playing the bank into the top left hand corner. Will play safety. It's the safety he's gone trying to get tight in behind that three. Won't be happy with that shot, Earl. Yeah, I think the cards a bit previous. Maybe e -A R and L led that. I think he might be able to flick this in. Yeah, that was a very loose shot from Earl Strickland there. He knows it. Let Tony Drago in, and as we said, 
And that's Tony is in amongst the balls. He's as good as anyone. Well, well, I wouldn't see as bad as Gary Lineker, pinching crisps off kids. But he'll accept gifts, will Drago. Looks like Hurtland to two zip in the semi final. Just needs to be a little careful on this shot. And the cue ball back into the. Chain of the queue. Which will uh, please the snooker purists. He's going to come into this because he's got a nice angle. Into the. Round the angles. Options. But he got it by drawing the ball, got it by shifting the ball like a true snooker player. And in a trice from the world of snooker, Tony Drigo gets a two zip drop on the former world champion. Well, a mistake from Earl Strickland in that second rack. Let in Tony Drago. Took the opportunity with both hands and now goes into a 2 0 lead. If he can just get this consistency on the break, the consistency that he found towards Back the three, latter parts Tony Drago of break, both of his previous matches. Keeping the cue ball, uh, losing it slightly over to the right-hand side of the table, and I don't think he's got a shot on the one. Very dramatic, the uh, winner break formula. We've seen so much room events where we have alternate breaks. But in this one, the opponent can suddenly swoop back with a run. Well, we saw from Earl in his previous match against Efren Reyes, the legendary Efren Reyes, that Efren raced into a 3-0 lead. That didn't bother Strickland in the slightest. As soon as he got one chance, he took the next six racks to go into a 6-3 lead himself. Forward. Just a push out here from Tony. Leaving Earl tight under the cushion. Does that give Earl a chance of replying with a fiendish snooker? Well, there is a couple of options here for Earl, so I think he will take it. He won't pass control back to Tony here. He's got a number of options of the safety, trying to fl just, just lightly flick the yellow one and leaving the cue ball somewhere in between, somewhere in behind the eight or nine ball down towards the bottom of the table. Well, my hold out this title, Strickland, three times world champion. Has he got the weight just right? Another roll, and Don't maybe he hasn't. I think he has. No, he's let chance for Tony. Not an easy pot, but Tony straight down on it, and he's miscued that. Oh, shot. Ball in hand. It's rare you'll see a miscue at this level of the game, but just a cue ball. Quite tight oh. under the cushion, and because of that, maybe a lack of chalk just on the area of his Q-tip there, and put himself... Well, Earl now knows that he's got to make something of this chance, but as we just mentioned, he he will have no doubting of his own abilities. He could, he could be six, maybe even seven nil down, and he'd still fancy himself to win this match, as in every match. Billy Bremner called his autobiography. You get now for coming second. Earl attitude out of a winner. Sometimes gets upset if crowds don't give him respect. But it has been known to sort of lead with his chin, start gobbing off at sections of a crowd without being specific. And then somebody in the crowd have a go back at him like happened at Cardiff. The last World Championships in his game against Davis. Didn't affect Davis. Davis took a timeout. Earl not only argued with the crowd, argued with the referee. <coughs> but I will stress that I don't think in this guy's case it's gamesmanship. I think it's just talent bubbling out. If he does anything less than perfect, he starts slagging himself. Doesn't want to come too straight on this. It's that's that's okay from here. You could see him looking a touch anxious as the cue ball was coming towards the cushion. So he needs to be able to get that white back into the table. And that's perfect. Just far enough north, that object ball was on the middle knuckle to let him get the contact on the cushion to draw out in the middle. And this is deficit cut to two one.
There will be Earl up to break in the next rack. Earl has been extremely consistent in his breaking in both matches. His match, first round match against Niels Fien from the Netherlands. Both players were on form and both players were able to run a number of racks together. And then, as we mentioned, against Reyes, trailing 3-0. He ran off the next six racks before eventually coming through 8-6 to take this position up against Tony in the semi-final. Rack uh, four. Oh, the semi-final should be a cracker. Very tricky. One rack Sar to two. Of Chinese Taipei will take on local hero Alex Laley. <laughs> yep, yeah, will be job done will be his feeling on that break Doesn't need to get a ball down and then position on the low ball that's what he's got well Earl could probably whistle through these with no road map blindfolded with his feet on the wheel of a Buick 8 shouldn't be a problem ball for him here and just like Drigger and uh, there will be potted sharpish. He will pot sharpish. Yeah, he's going to take the two down into the bottom right hand pocket. He's just checking to see whether the four goes into the same pocket. So he might try and slide the cue ball down to the bottom left hand side of the table. That's what he's doing. He's gone a little too far. I think he was trying... He certainly was checking to see whether the pink four passed the nine into the bottom right-hand pocket. Maybe he saw that it didn't, in which case he was playing for position into the centre back. Well, then you can see it does. So I think that was a misjudgment on his positional shot. I think he was playing to get position in the bottom right-hand corner. Now he's got to take on the harder shot into the centre back. Like the use of the nine to hold the ball. Bit of distance between these balls, but no work to do positionally. He's going to take the cut into the centre rather than the long ball into the corner. And now he's left himself in a little bit of an awkward position. Absolutely, betwixt and between on the green six, because to take it long involves an almost certain in off. That's well played. Risk it, yeah. Played it into the corner of the middle pocket. Was risking the in off, but he was played it with such amount of side that he was confident it wouldn't be dropping. So got himself out of a very minor positional predicament and now in nice position on the nine to level the match at two apiece. Two two. Confirmed then. <laughs> Strickland showing precision right in navigating Those that trickiness around the middle two pocket. Two. And neither of these two will hang about with the break or when they're in open play. The crowd sensing a feast of aggressive pull. <laughs> and Drigo already sniffing 3 2 in the hole. Can't see all missing many of these. No, just switching hands rather than stretching with the bridge. Coming out into the centre of the table for the blue two. And as you say, the only real danger in this this rack is the getting position from the orange five to the green six. Shouldn't be any trouble whatsoever before that. Just roll the pink four into the bottom right hand corner. Harking back to one of his greatest moments uh, in the final 2002 against Bustamante. A massive emotional swell for Bustamante, who'd uh, had a bereavement, lost a, one of his children. And Busty looked like being able to sail the final at one stage, we head through most of it, and then Earl came through at the end to win 17 15. At his best, under pressure.
because if it's down to well, he has not the slightest doubt about his own executive abilities on that blue base. I think he's okay. He didn't want to come too far over. That was the, the toughest shot in this rack. He's looking quite anxiously at it. I think he's just about got enough room. John says it was ominous. Came back from 3 0 down against Reyes. And a legend in the States. I was playing pool in a bar in Florida, and there were six teams called Earl Strickland's 11. Earl Strickland 1, Earl Strickland 2, and all the way through to six teams. Legend of the game. Usually makes the talking, but most often for precision pool like this, rather than temperamental matters. Well, Dutch straight. audience appreciating the excellence of the three times world champion, bound for the Hall of Fame, sure as eggs, is Strickland. Drago learning leaps and bounds there. Yeah, Drago knows he just a single chance will be enough for him. He's managed to string a few racks together in both of his previous matches. But he also knows that he's up against one of the most consistent players in history. You have nine ball. Well, Put a red coat and a Busby hat on him, and he'd be fit to stand outside Buck House. Earl, ready, alert, loves the fray. Playing for money since he's about age 14. Rack he's a six. road player, the road the warrior. Leads three racks to two. In Carolina and Kentucky. But by the time he was 16, legend, world legend now. Things looking ominous for Drago. Yeah, he lost the cue ball slightly there, Earl, but he's come out okay. He's got a shot on the one to the top right-hand corner and what looks like a combination two on to eight after this. Just needs to find a path for that cue ball. As it's quite a fine cut on the one. Here you can see the two <coughs> onto the eight onto the bottom left-hand corner. So that's what he's looking at positionally. Part of the pocket. Well, that's Foul shot. strange Four choice of nine. shot from Earl. I thought he would have played that a lot softer. It was a difficult, difficult path to find the cue ball to get around their table and then back in, in and out behind the two and the eight. I felt he could have dropped that in with a far less pace, and it's a two-nine combination straight for Tony Drago. Earl, head in hands, set that up for Drago. Three apiece, but Drago, as we see again, the easy plant, levels again. Drago's taken two racks in a row. He's now 5-3 up. This Tony is rack three. nine. Leads five racks to three. Nicely held. The white in the middle, though, was nicely held. That blue got in the way. As it is, though, I think he'd had a difficult shot on the one even if the white had stayed where he had it. Well, this, is it. this should be interesting from Tony, because we've seen it in uh, earlier matches, him refuse pots like this and take on the safe seat, but no such as the cue ball. Close to losing the cue ball. Still okay, but what he has done as an aside, is he tied up the five, the orange five, which will be the ball on after potting the two. That's what he's looking at now, where he wants to be. And this is a tough shot to put this two and get the cue ball back around. And in thinking about the track of the cue ball, he took his mind off the pot. And as they say on the Broadway stage, hello, Dolly. So excellent work by Tony Drago to forge out a lead, 5-3 lead over Earl Strickland, but he's now given Earl the chance to get back into this game. He's brought the cue ball down exactly where Tony Drago was looking at it previous, so he'll be playing the bank 
on the orange five into the right hand side it's like we've said when Efren Reyes plays these shots you'd assume it to be fairly in the air well fairly's not enough there great chance then Drago to get into a dominant position looking good enough for 6-3 in this tense semi-final well yeah I'm too I'm surprised to see Earl Strickland miss that bank into the center pocket and leave this chance for Tony Drago to move within two racks of a final position well, that should have been cream cheese on a bagel for him that shot I would have thought doesn't want to come too far no, he's okay 6-3 coming up Drago now wants only two racks to take a notable scope Strickland was led into that rack by Tony Drago. A mistake, a miss on the two. That left a chance for Earl. The five was tied up. Got in good position for the bank, but missed it and let Tony back in. As we've said before, though, here you can see the attempt by Earl on that bank. That's a surprising miss from Earl. He is one of the best players in the world particularly at those bank shots did it have to be at that pace I think he was trying to narrow the angle slightly by hitting it at that pace rack Didn't 10 quite narrow the angle Tony enough. Drago to break leads six racks to three red in and out of the hole Ooh, tricky on the one well, if he, if he can see the left-hand side, it'll only be a safety. We'll try and hide the white in between the red three and the green six. Has to be very precise, this one. And Brooks, like an Alcatraz. Get out of it, you could end up in a shark's mouth. Well, look at that. Can he well. get through there? Even if he Settle can't, down, he may only have to jump a slight... Well, he's playing straight through. Well, that's terribly unlucky for Tony Drago. It was a good safety to leave a gap straight through, but he'll be trying to put him straight back in the same position here. Yeah, and he tapped that reply shot from Strickland. He played in very, very good humor this game. To Sarah Strickland well. He rates Drago. Just like he's one of the first to spot the horizon knowledge of the game of Steve Davis. Drago needs only two racks to go into the World Pool Masters final. Yeah, and being in that position, this does add to the pressure for Earl Strickland on this and one hand it's all now on th the only difficult part of this rack is whether the three passes by Thank the green six down, into the top right hand pocket well he's going for the one nine combination Tony. oh this is almost rash oh! what am I saying decide to just twist the scalpel on Earl with a combination shot twice we've seen ball in hand for Tony Drago in this match and he's immediately got down and played the combination on the nine lacks no confidence in his potting ability whatsoever taking him to the hill against Earl Strickland and now Earl really knows he's up against it well if he brought his watercolors to Cardiff in the middle of 2003 and got to the last four of the world championship He's brought the full oil job here to the Whirlpool Masters in Holland. Looking final bound. Rack 11, Tony Drago to break, leads seven racks to three. He needs a good break here. It's good control on the cue ball, a little unlucky. He's got a kiss, taking it over further away from the yellow one. Settle difficult, down, please. Difficult shot. On the yellow one, he's down quick. I'm not sure he should play this too quickly. He should 
Well, he was in no hesitation about the crossfield snugger. Could be in the deciding rack of this semi final. Foul shot. Oh. Well, Ball in hand. Amazing mistake there from Earl. If he could get through to see the one, to, to clip the four on the way through to it is. Looks jangled. Down. Looks jangled. He does indeed. I think it's, it's, you can only have to give respect to Tony Drago because it's, it's his play, his style of play throughout this match that has rattled Earl. Well, I think it's widely agreed, John Gale, that most people think he's got a lot to learn he's looking. about nine ball pool. But what nobody is saying is that he can't learn fast. Earl, I think, respects his potting Ooh. ability, but may not respect his all round game. That could have been match oh, four. Yeah. If that had gone in, the rest of the rack looked to formality. That's how close it is in these matches. Oh, and no. Earl now, even though he is trailing seven racks to three, he will class himself as a favourite in this match, Ronnie said. That's right. There's a very fine line between braggadocio and brilliance. And you're looking at it. There's never a dull moment when this guy picks up his stick and starts to do what hypotenuse and all them famous men used to do years ago. The appliance of science to all the angles. So Sunday Fed is 7 4. What a chance Tony Drago had in that rack, closing out the match, and he knows it there, shaking his head. Just that three into the centre bag. If that had gone in, here you can see it again. Just caught the near knuckle, and then onto the far knuckle as well, keeping the ball out. If that had gone in, what a chance he'd have had. Trying hard to keep composure <laughs> under duress. Giving himself the finger trigger treatment. Earl could give him a hell of a lot worse than that in the next few minutes. Rack 12, Earl Strickland to break, training four racks to seven. Predator. Will the Predator become the Terminator? Lovely tickle on that one, lovely tickle on the one, sets him up for this rack. Blue two's almost a gimme. Yeah, he was looking anxious there. No ball down until that yellow one got the final kiss off the green into the pocket. Now in good shape. Might have an awkward angle on this three, which is taking the cue ball across to the right-hand side of the table. He'd r prefer if it was straight or if the cue ball was further over to the right. Could then get easy position on the pink four and then you can see it's it's not so the cue ball is going to be coming over towards it so he might be forced into the four nine combination or trying to develop it and that's a dangerous shot but it's come out all right for all seven four trailing has to win all the racks but still a body language of a professional limbo dancer just mooching around the table in a cocoon of confidence about his own ability. 3-0 down against Reyes last round. One. Drawn ever nearer. Chipping back. Drago's lead. The whole proceedings are good by that echoing click of the chalk as Earl uses it and pats it down. Could that be the click of nails? Drago's coffin. <laughs> Strickland on the red peg, striking back to all here in Holland.
Another Pearl Strickland, three times world champion on uh, one of the fight backs of his life. 7 5, he trills. Tony Drigger needs only one more act to go on our final. But with this man in the green, looking in the pink, anything can happen. Well, he showed in his previous two matches the consistency of his play and his breaking. And he really needs that now. He needs to have a good break for the next three racks, run them out, and book his place in the final. Any mistake, and Tony Drago could pounce. Rack 13, Neil Strickland to exactly. break. Exactly. Trailing five Took racks Took out the very seven. talented Neil Sfeyan, 8-5. Then came back against Reyes from three zip. Did Strickland? It's got no easy shot on the two. Three. See, here's an example of what I'm talking about throughout the series. Earl is showing temperament here, but I think that's self-centered. That's just you are Earl Strickland. You are a great Hall of Fame bound. Why don't you leave yourself better than that? I think it's introverted criticism rather than being in in any way you're trying to upset the opponent it's a good safety he's got the the cue ball where he wants it but he didn't want that too that close to the pocket this this means that if tony can escape from the snooker he's got every chance of potting the two earl would have liked that too to have been a good couple of feet short that's a great shot from Tony Drago. Now, what an opportunity he has here. Thank you. Thank you. Just a slight angle on this three. Wants to be careful. Well, well. after the caress, the gossamer thin tickle on the blue, Settle down, please. he clubs the red. What it, a mistake. He's tried to pinch the pocket there clearly saw the finishing line in front of him. In snooker and pool, it's been a long, long time since Drago lifted silverware. Would love to win this one. This I'll remind you. On a few titles in the world, the great Efren Reyes has never won. He's sitting watching now. But this man has taken this title before, and he's also been world champion three times. And if he gets on a roll, Tony's dreams will die here by the sea in Holland. Earl Strickland takes the 13th rack. He now only trails by a single rack. Tony Drago shaking his head for the second time in this match. And it's been the three ball both occasions. He missed a three into the centre bag early on to run out the match. And again, he's missed the three into the top left-hand corner. Behind the pin, it's Mile. We can feel the tension here. Taking all these Dutch people. A Niagara fall of sweat from the brow, the noble brow trigger. Is that wince the thoughts of what might have Rack 14, been. Earl Strickland to break, trains six racks to seven. Just needs two. He's watching that pink. He doesn't want it to get in the way, and it has. Earl Strickland will be desperately Thank disappointed you. with that. Looked like he had an easy run out to take it to Hill Hill. As it is, a pink four came all the way around and scuppered his plans of an easy pot on the blue two. Crowd, edge of their seats. Strickland, edge of the table. Eyes dull. Pensive. How to keep Trigo at bay. Trigo needs just one rack for a place in the final. It's not the easiest of safety shots here for Earl either. Playing a half ball into the two would be the normal shot, sending the two back up the table, leaving the cue ball down the bottom of the table. But 
the positioning of the four and five balls would block the path of the two and it makes it all the more difficult so he may elect to play cushion first and try and get a fuller contact with the two Nigel Rees top referee on the case <coughs> even to plot it oh, magic shot Called a kick shot. Certainly one of the solar plexus for his opponent. Lovely use of the cushion first. That was a tough shot to pot the two there. It was quite a way off of the cushion to come across it and cut it back into the pocket after hitting the cushion first. And one thing that won't happen in this, as he tries to draw level, is the oil in the arm won't freeze with Strickland. You name it, he's been there playing for big, big books since he was 16 and winning big, big pots in the later part of his career. What a last rack we could be about to view. I don't know about pay per view, I'd pay per ball. If this goes like it seems to be, it's a hill of peace. You can see old Strickland certainly pumped up. A little bit too much adrenaline in on that shot, taking him too far over, but no problems on the nine. We've got a hill hill situation. Old Strickland to break in the final rack. Tony Drago can just contemplate the two chances he's already had to close out this match. Two misses on the red three. Let Earl Strickland back in. Well, I know it's not as poetic as some songs, but climb every hill is the sort of song that pool players like. A hill too far. This is the deciding rack. The pis aller, as the French say, this world game the faces showing what behind the mask worry concentration strickland by virtue final one in the rack shoots the for the game and a place in the final good sound for all the third the clunk of the balls going down but where's he left the one been unlucky again with the roll of the balls. It looked like he was going to be okay on the yellow one. Drago was up like a rocket at Cape Kennedy to see uh, the adjacency of the one to the black. Yeah, first of all, he looked like he was going to be okay on the one. Then it looked like the combination was going to be okay, but the eight is just enough out of line to make the combination that much more difficult. But the way he's looking at it, I think the thinnest of slices he thinks doesn't take the black in. Exactly, that's it, Sid. Really would have to be an extremely fine cut on the one, the yellow one on the left-hand side to pot that eight. He's just aiming for the safety instead. Hasn't got the cue ball in behind. This has to be a nip shot, as they call it. It's got to be in and out or else it's a push. That's <laughs> very well played. And Earl is... I mean, he's... he's he will be applauding Tony Drago's shot, but he is mad at himself for the exactly. previous safety. Exactly. Let's say to all you world fans, of boom, me and John are high in the list of the fan know, club. Please. We think it's wonderful. We think it's not like McEnroe when that was gamesmanship. This is self-criticism <laughs> and in no way gamesmanship. Oh, and that's Boy, an time. enormous lash. Well, that's the other side of it. You can see he's disgusted with himself Settle for the down, previous. Please. Thank you. Settle down. But why would somebody bound for the Hall of Fame, three times world champion, massively respected, mainly for his talent, suddenly fling away a match like that? You can carry self criticism to the nth degree. That's the equivalent to taking out a knife and cutting off his cue and arm. Crowd already. 
give an applause for what's looking like being a victory for Ray Pedrego. He made himself fantastically popular with pool fans all around the world. In the summer of 2003 with Cardiff when he got the last four of 128 players in the World Championship. And he's now looking good to book his place against the legend in the final of the World Pool Masters tournament. Simple stop shot now, trickles it through. <laughs> Just dances round. We'll all ask him to put it. Maybe not. Drago's finest. One of his finest hours. Tony Drago. Earl of Pearl Strickland suddenly lost self control. Whacked the balls around. Gave it to him on a plate. And Tony Drago into the final. We don't know who's going to be his opponent, but it will be a fight. As we see, oh. Got all back at the table practicing. And there's the just wild lash. Admitting defeat. Yet another classic at the 2003 PokerEmpire.com World Pool Masters. This is how Tony Drago got through to his first major final in 15 years.